Hey there VCHHD students, my name is Andy, I'm a VC Health and Human Development teacher. In this short video we're going to look at how to demonstrate interrelationships between the dimensions of health and well-being in VCHHD. So before we dive into that, just a reminder, the Health Resources Hub YouTube channel has got a new video like this one coming out each day between now and the HHD exam at the end of the year. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so and tell your HHD friends to do so too, and you'll get access to all of those videos. You can also sign up to the ACE HHD exam preparation and revision session that I'm presenting this year for ACE at book.acedvc.com. You can see our links there to our Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, where you can get alerts to the new videos coming out each day, and our email if you've got any questions or you want to suggest some videos that I could work on. So what part of the course is the interrelationships between the dimensions relevant to? You can see here one of the key skills in Unit 3 Error Study 1 is to describe interrelationships between the dimensions of health and well-being. And I think the best way to look at uh, this particular key skill is to look at a past exam question and then have a look at how you can demonstrate this key skill. So as you probably know, interrelationships is talking about how different dimensions of health and well-being are connected um, to one another. And so you can see from the exam last year, there was a scenario that they provided regarding Patrick, who was 67, had recently retired, who was quite bored and ended up joining the Australian Men's Shed Association. And that was where he had an opportunity to meet um, other men and work together with them and build things like furniture, um, as well as discuss issues in their lives that were affecting their overall health and well-being. And after that scenario, the question asked students for four marks to describe the interrelationships between two dimensions of Patrick's health and well-being. So how are marks allocated to these questions because that's a really important thing to think about before answering one and so typically marks are allocated for the links that are made between dimensions and so you can see here okay if you for example were to link social dimension of health and well-being to something to do with the mental dimension of health and well-being and then back to social again you've obviously only focused on two dimensions like that previous question was asking but a mark is typically allocated where the arrows are here to the link that are made between the dimensions but that previous question was worth four marks so that would mean only two marks were allocated to those links and so then a maximum of two more marks can also be linked from the case study to your examples of the dimensions of health and well-being so if there is a case study present often there are a couple of marks allocated for linking aspects of that case study to one or more dimensions. So you can see what I've included here is example from the examiner's report last year with a high scoring response. And I've tried to highlight in different colors where you could um, expect marks to be allocated for an answer such as this. So you can see this one here is talking about Patrick joining the men's shared association and how that provided him with an opportunity to socialize with other men while working on projects and improve his communication skills. So a mark could be expected there because that's a link from the case study to the social dimension of health and well-being. Also you can then see in green I've showed you how the students then linked the social dimension of health and well-being to the mental dimension of health and well-being. So they've talked about with that ability to socialize, he's more likely to discuss issues in his own life, vent his emotions and frustrations as a result of his unemployment, and that can lower his levels of stress and anxiety. So that's a social to mental link. And so after that, you can see in pink there, there's been a link then from mental, okay, back to social again. So they've talked about his positive headspace, okay, if he's lowering his levels of stress and anxiety, inventing those frustrations, can motivate him to continue attending Men's Shed and socialize. So there's another link, okay, back to that social dimension of health and well-being. But the student's gone on and talked about a different example of social health and well-being in blue there. So forming productive relationships with others, which is another link back to the case study. And so another mark could be allocated there. So you can see a couple of marks allocated to the links between the dimensions and a couple of marks allocated for links from the case study to dimensions of health and well-being. So that's just one way that you could have answered that question. Obviously there's lots of different ways given there's lots of different dimensions of health and well-being you could have used. So when thinking about these interrelationship questions think about your answer 
as something that starts at one point and builds. So it's not something that starts at one point and then stops and then starts afresh. It has to be a continual linking building answer when it comes to the interrelationships. So make sure you're being, you're able to make those connections between the dimensions as that's where marks are allocated. If you do um, reference one dimension twice in an answer, so if you, for example, went from social to mental and back to social, that's fine, but make sure you're using two different examples relevant to the dimension that you mentioned twice, not the same example twice, because that won't show sufficient um, depth of knowledge of that dimension. So in the last example, they talked about like socializing, um, as well as communication skills and productive relationships. So there was enough depth there for that dimension of social, that social dimension of health and well-being. And I always say to my students, if you're sort of in doubt about whether or not you've made enough links to obtain the amount of marks the question is allocated, add an extra um, dimension on at the end. So link to one more dimension. So at least if you've got there another link, okay, then that could be worth another mark. Obviously, as um, long as you're staying within the parameters of the question and how many dimensions they ask you to focus on. Okay, hopefully you found that video useful. As I mentioned, the YouTube channel, the revision lecture and our social media links are there as well as our email. Thanks so much.